tropical storms and hurricanes. They're a fact of summertime life along the Gulf Coast. We've had close calls, direct strikes, major flooding, and even sometimes little to nothing at all in our area. But when tropical action revs up in hurricane season 2014, do you have what it takes to be storm aware and storm wise? Learn what you need to know to be ready now. This is an ABC 27 Storm Team special presentation. Hurricane 2014, ready now. I'm Chief Meteorologist Casanova Nurse. It's easy to marvel at the beauty of the Big Bend coastline. The shallow waters of the bay and the gulf provide picturesque scenes and bountiful enjoyment. These waters are also the way of life for many of our neighbors. But as we've seen in the past, these waters can rage and the effects can be devastating. In Hurricane 2014 Ready Now, we'll explain new enhancements to forecasting and warning systems. We'll examine the past experiences and current concerns of coastal and inland areas. We'll cover the vital tools and advice for being proactive and prepared, plus a throwback to a hyperactive hurricane season for Florida and a peek ahead to what this year may bring. Hurricane forecasting techniques have evolved and improved with advancements in new computing and tracking technologies. These enhancements have narrowed forecasting errors and have provided new ways of alerting and informing vulnerable populations of the dangers of approaching storms. Starting this year, the threat of storm surge will be more clearly outlined with potential storm surge flooding forecast maps. These new graphics, using information and guidance developed over the past several years, will more clearly indicate how much water may rise above ground in an impending storm situation. If you go a mile inland, it's now very difficult to convince someone that the water can come that far inland. This graphic helps us communicate that. Since there's been noticeable improvement in the accuracy of track forecasts, the cone of possible forecast movement issued for each tropical system is being narrowed this year, reflecting greater confidence and quality in outlook data. Even the computer models themselves will be upgraded with refined calculation skills and resolution improvements. There are still some weaknesses with predicting the strength of tropical systems, which the director of the National Hurricane Center acknowledges. And I'm hoping that with some very recent encouraging results from those who are working on the latest and greatest computer forecast models and using all kinds of data from aircraft to make those models better, that in the next several years we're perhaps going to see some improvements in the intensity forecast. Additional monitoring and tracking techniques are coming in 2016, courtesy of the newer generation Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite, or GOES-R. It has the ability to focus on a particular storm every 30 seconds. So that'll really give you the ability to better predict tracks and more over the intensity of that storm as it develops. Hurricane hunters, and they're just one of the many tools meteorologists use to make an accurate forecast when a hurricane threatens. Lieutenant Commander Peter Siegel has been a navigator for the NOAA Hurricane Hunters since 2004, when the Quartet of Chaos slammed into Florida. Everybody that flies in the hurricane, they all do it for uh, different reasons. Uh, some are adrenaline junkies, um, but I like to do it because I'm helping people. Uh, we're out there to uh, gather information that helps keep people safe. The Beastly Air Force C-130 is based in Mississippi carrying a crew of five specialized technicians and meteorologists to gather and record weather data from deep inside a storm, using sophisticated equipment and sensors on board and offloaded from the aircraft with electronic drop sons. The plane can withstand the violent forces of a hurricane and is capable of staying airborne for nearly 18 hours with a cruise speed of more than 300 miles per hour. The partner plane in the fleet is the WP-3D Orion, operated by NOAA and based near Tampa. It's a smaller, agile reconnaissance aircraft packed with the fine-tuned observation equipment needed to track and measure air temperature, moisture, wind speed, water droplet size and movement, sea surface temperatures, atmospheric gas samples. Highly capable of collecting plenty of data to better understand the behaviors of the storm and aid in forecast and research needs. The standard crew of 18 to 20 persons can also be dispatched for non-tropical atmospheric experiments and projects nationally and internationally. The hurricane hunters play a crucial role in monitoring these storms from above. But here on ground level, the livelihoods of many people are dependent on the waters of the bay and the Gulf of Mexico. 
Meteorologist Michelle Rotella examined the tropical season's impacts on the fishing industry's routine. That's right, Cass. Enough damage from a storm can cause an impact on businesses locally and nationally. Coastal Franklin County is mostly known for its beautiful Gulf beaches and great seafood, but it's also known to be a possible target for hurricanes during the season. While locals around the community are usually prepped and ready for the season, they also have concerns about how it might impact their businesses, especially the seafood markets. The oyster industry in Franklin County provides 90% of the oysters the state of Florida produces, 10% of the oysters the nation produces. So our oysters reach a large market. Most of the Apalachicola Bay oysters can be found at restaurants along the eastern seaboard. Some go as north as New York and as west as Denver, Colorado. But when tropical storms strike, it can drastically change the market. During hurricanes and when there's a tight market, it affects the price, it affects the ability for the seafood workers to make a living. Uh, it puts a real stress on things. Beverly Hewitt has been with and now owns the Apalachicola Seafood Grill for over 23 years and knows just how great of an impact hurricane season can have on our business. If we get a hurricane and people are aware of it, they don't tend to come and that can really imp impact our economic um, summer and uh, money that sustains us through the winter. Hewitt says if the bay receives a lot of water during a tropical storm, it can affect the oyster production. It all depends on how much water is, is associated with the tropical storm or a hurricane because too much uh, fresh water will also impact the oysters and they'll have to close the bay due to red tides and that type of thing. So, you know, it, it does hurt the oysters. One of the most recent storms residents of coastal Franklin County remember is Tropical Storm Debbie back in 2012. Debbie was in 2012, previous that in 2004 and 5, we had a number of hits, storm surge, rain events. Uh, and river flooding is what's gotten us through in hurricanes. And the thing about the storm surge, it affects the beaches, but affects the Apalachicola Bay. It moves the bay around, it moves the mud around. It, in 1985, we had so much mud moved around, it covered up the oyster industry, and it was shut down for a year. Pierce says even though hurricanes and tropical storms are inevitable, the best scenario would be for the storms to come in and out and move quickly. Storms that bring more rain and wave action are the ones that can do the worst damage. While extra attention is given to coastal zones as tropical trouble approaches, there's plenty of evidence that inland areas are not immune to certain hazards these storms create, right Max? That's right Cass, high wind gusts are still a concern farther inland, but the greater threat is the widespread flooding that can occur. That's the number one killer in tropical systems. It's been nearly 30 years since the last hurricane hit our area head on. The name was Kate, and it was the storm that knocked out power to parts of Tallahassee for more than a week. Parks Camp, meteorologist at the local National Weather Service, says that our region is more susceptible to long-term damage than other areas. We've got all these beautiful trees around Tallahassee and all these oak trees that don't react as well to wind as, say, a palm tree or something like that. And the topography here is a little hillier, allowing flooding to happen easily. The land where Cascades Park was built has a history of this problem, but... The park was strategically built to double as a stormwater drainage area that'll stop flooding from happening here all the way down Franklin Boulevard to here at Leanne High School, a place that also floods frequently. Even farther north into South Georgia, tropical threats are still prevalent. Justin Ballou, agricultural resource agent for Decatur County, would have a tough job if they saw widespread damage. That would be the biggest thing, is helping them figure out how to maintain what crop they have and how to make a good harvest after the damage is done which would be difficult. The big three crops of the area would all be impacted. Corn stalks would blow over, cotton would rot, and peanuts would be uprooted. Besides having good insurance, Baloo has these words of advice for farmers. Pray. <laughs> I mean, it's, we're pretty vulnerable. Still to come on Hurricane 2014 Ready Now, tropical storms can threaten not just lives, but also livelihoods. We've got the tips you need to make sure your small business is ready for anything. Plus, being prepared is critical in tropical weather. From the obvious to the unusual, the supplies you might not think to pack could be the ones that save your life. Hurricanes, forces of nature, fascinating to view from space, effective at consuming heat from tropical waters, capable of producing 200 times more energy than the world's electrical generating capacity. You don't have to understand the physics of a hurricane, but you should fully know how you will be ready to respond if one aims for your neighborhood.
One essential way to be ready is to have a survival kit assembled right now. You can start with the basics, enough to last for the first 72 hours after a storm. Water, non-perishable foods, first aid kit, communication devices and chargers, a NOAA weather radio, battery operated items and the batteries to run them. Customize your kit for specific family, pet and medical needs. Our digital severe weather guide is well stocked with suggestions on how to build your survival kit so you can be ready now. Michelle, you took a deeper look into some storm supplies available that maybe people don't know exist. That's right, and while it's important to have your standard supply kit, we learned about some new and unique items from the National Hurricane Conference in Orlando that you might find you want to have. It can be difficult to make a home-cooked meal in the days after a storm. You can overcome the loss of power and satisfy your cravings with ready-to-eat meals that are also ready to heat. This kind of prepackaged meal gives you the energy and nutrients you need without needing a stove. Our heater will heat the food by 100 degrees in 10 minutes. Uh, the food does not have to be refrigerated and it's fully cooked. So this is something you can put uh, stored away in your, in your home or move it in your car without any problems. Sometimes flashlights can be bulky, or maybe you just can't find the right size batteries to make it work. Chemical stick lights aren't just useful for trick-or-treating. In the event of power outages, they are bright, lightweight, compact, and easy to carry, and last a great amount of time. Emergency situations like uh, disaster preparedness or hurricanes or floods, they work perfect for, for families and businesses where you have business continuity. We continue to do your business, and you have chemical light in case you don't have a backup generator. At home, it also acts as a area lighting and safety lighting for egress or for home use. And so you're able to read a book over light or still function as a family. It's risky to venture out in your vehicle after a storm strikes. You could easily get stuck in a tough situation. Max Tracks is a device you can keep in the back of your car to get you back on the road. It helps you, it retrieves you when you're stuck in any sand, snow, mud, silt. You use it, uh, one side is a shovel, shovel out any material stuck underneath your tire, flip the other side over, stick it underneath there, gently accelerate and pulls you right out of whatever you're stuck in. Remember those hard to find batteries? Eliminate that hassle with these nifty battery organizers. Reduce the need to store separate sunscreen and bug repellent by grabbing this combo lotion. And you can use these self-filling flood barriers instead of traditional sandbags. Focus your energy on other necessities instead of laboring over sand piles. These examples of survival kit supplies may seem a bit extraordinary, but they could possibly make dealing with the hurricane situation a little easier to handle. So you've gotten your kit supplies ready, you've tracked down ways to secure your home, and you've learned your evacuation zone by using our digital severe weather guide. But what do you need to do to get your small business ready? Employees, documents, and data are just as prone to the effects of a landfalling tropical system. Just like in the domestic setting, a well-developed action plan can help keep you in business after a storm passes while protecting your workers and assets. Use waterproof containers to store important documents. Backup data at off-site locations. Take inventory of equipment and review insurance policies. Have an emergency plan for employees and be sure to practice them often. Your workers are your most important asset, so give them ample time to prepare their families for a storm. When in doubt, heed the advice from local emergency management agencies. When they say evacuate, it's time to shut down, button up everything and go ahead and evacuate. That's the best method we have. Have a post-storm contingency plan, factoring the possibility of working with limited cash, water, power and sewer services for two weeks. Still ahead, tropical storms can bring heavy rain and damaging winds, but not every threat comes from the skies. There are many commonly known risks associated with tropical systems. Wind, storm surge, heavy rain are just a few that we've discussed already. Meteorologist Max Saperis analyzed a destructive side effect experienced from tropical storm flooding in 2012. Yeah, Cass, Tropical Storm Debbie isn't memorable for the wind damage it caused, but rather the sinkholes that opened up after heavy rains fell. Now we take a look at how one of the hardest hit communities is recovering. This was the scene in Live Oak after Tropical Storm Debbie tore through the historic downtown district. The city of Live Oak is located in the heart of the Suwannee River Valley. Therefore, whenever it rains a lot, flooding of homes, businesses, and even roadways, as you can see behind me, well, that happens relatively easily around here. But what happened in June of 2012 was something Mayor Sonny Nobles hadn't ever experienced before. 
It was probably the worst event that we've had. Nearly two feet of rain fell, causing floodwaters to rise over five feet high. But that's not all. There was a lot of water, and then you come back by a few hours later and there's not any water, so you know it's gone somewhere. That somewhere was into a sinkhole 160 feet deep that opened up beneath John Robinson's thrift store. While I was trying to open the door, I heard a racket. You know, sound like something busting. As his business was being swallowed by the sinkhole, you could actually see the buildings start to lean into each other. The city eventually tore down the buildings, and all that's left now is a vacant lot. The hope is to one day turn the area into a farmer's market. Luckily, Robinson had flood and sinkhole insurance. He says if you don't already have it and you're in a flood-prone area, oh my gosh. it's definitely worth the money. The insurance is important. The insurance is important to me because you, you never know when something's going to happen. But Hal Erth, who owns a law firm across the street from where the sinkhole formed, didn't initially think the insurance was important. This, even though the same building flooded 50 years ago after Hurricane Dora hit the Suwannee River Valley. The bank required that I have flood insurance and, and went kind of round and round about that, but had paid the premium two months before. However, once the water crept over the sandbags, he was glad he had it. Nine inches. This is about the height of the water. Mayor Nobles continues to invest in building new retention areas and dry wells to help prevent something this bad from ever happening again. Because it will eventually flood again. Next, we look back at the disastrous foursome of hurricanes that hit the Sunshine State a decade ago. And we'll take a deeper look into the latest projections and the key factors that may define this season when Hurricane 2014 Ready Now returns. Of course, everyone remembers 2004, where Florida got hit by four hurricanes. Charlie, Francis, Ivan, and Gene, four names that became significant for the Sunshine State. It's been 10 years since these four hurricanes crisscrossed the state, spreading rain and fierce winds to all corners of Florida. Charlie reached Category 4 145 mile per hour winds off the southwest Florida coast, putting Tampa Bay in danger, but eventually curving into Port Charlotte and smashing the spine of the state with 90 mile per hour wind gusts clocked in Orlando. Over $6 billion of damage was done. Hurricane Francis slammed into the Port St. Lucie area on September 5th. As it weakened into a tropical storm and emerged into the Gulf, Francis took aim at the Big Bend. The storm team covered the progress of Francis all day and night that Labor Day weekend, even as it slid into the St. Mark's area with 50 mile per hour winds. Up to 10 inches of rain fell in North Florida, and flooding was a major hassle for many areas. Ferocious Ivan was a terrible Category 4 hurricane that devastated Pensacola on September 16th. Its outer band lashed at the Big Bend, producing a tornado in Bluntstown that killed four people and created a flooding three to six foot storm surge along the Wakulla County and Forgotten Coasts. And the foursome of trouble concluded with Hurricane Jean in October, hitting nearly the same location as Francis did just weeks before. All of these storms were part of a prolonged period of active hurricane seasons, some of which broke all-time records. Last year was one of the exceptions, with two non-major hurricanes. Forecasting experts assess how this year is shaping up. Last year's surprisingly limited action was attributed to a combination of active upper-level winds, regions of higher pressure and sinking air, and a broader reach of airborne dust and dryness coming from Africa's Sahara Desert. This year, there's a general agreement of another somewhat calmer hurricane season, but for a different and perhaps familiar reason, the El Nino phenomenon. El Nino is warmer than normal water in the central and eastern tropical Pacific, and what that does is it basically increases upper-level westerly winds in the Atlantic, which tears apart the developing storms and hurricanes. Klotzbach also cites a trend of cooler-than-average water temperatures in the Atlantic, the coolest in the deep tropical Atlantic since 1994. But caution is advised when using these signs of a lower number of storms this season as a reason to let your guard down. We don't know where the storms will form, and we don't know the steering patterns of where they'll be t taken after they form. We don't know those until just a few days in advance. Still to come, final thoughts from our ABC 27 storm team on what you need to keep in mind this hurricane season so you can be ready now. We presented loads of useful information this half hour. 
Let's leave you with three things you should know about the 2014 hurricane season. The time to get ready is now, long before a tropical storm or hurricane ever gets close to us. No matter how many or how few hurricanes form this season, it only takes one to hit our area to make the season active and memorable for us. Be assured that the storm team is ready and prepared to cover the season, and we'll be able to do that through our newscasts, our 24-hour weather now service on channel 27.3, online in our hurricane center at WTXL.TV, and on the go with the Weather Now interactive weather app and digital severe weather guide. All available to help you to be ready now. Thanks for watching.